today's video is about another important topic which is rh antibodies how to calculate rh so we see a labeled specimen and serum specimen and we align around 10 test tubes in a rack we are going to label the test tubes first because rh antibodies are going to be reported and performed in a titer or titer however you want to pronounce it so one is to one one is to two one is to four one is to eight one is to sixteen one is to thirty two one is to sixty four one to one twenty eight 256 and 512 till the end we are going to label 10 tubes you might as well uh, label the last tube as 1 is to 1024 but i'm not doing it in my video this time my last one is going to be 1 is to 512 here we go this one is 512 256 and the last one is 512 so we have labeled all our tubes and now we do the first step these are the labeled tubes as you can see there are 10 tubes make it clear and the first step is adding normal saline to all of the tubes so we are going to add two drops of saline starting from the second tube okay we are not going to add saline to the first tube we are going to add it to the second tube so two drops of saline is equal to 100 microliters of normal saline two drops is equal to 100 microliter you might be using a pipette so if you're using a pipette then it will be 100 microliter so this was adding saline now we are going to add the serum serum uh, we are going to add same two drops of patient serum but the click thing here is that we just add serum to the first two tubes right next onwards we are just going to transfer two drops taken from the second tube to the third tube then we take two drops from the third tube then we add it to the fourth tube and so on so what we are doing it we are making dilutions of the serum and you can see that you are using a pipette and taken and then taken again placed in the next one mixed and then taken again and discard the last two drops so we took from the 512 one and we've just discarded in a separate test tube so last step is the o cells addition of the o cells we are adding one drop of two to five percent rh d positive cells suspension in saline and serum titra titrations that we have made periodically and now uh, our uh, you could say our mixture of serum and o positive rh positive cells is ready now we are going to centrifuge this these tubes remember to keep a balance for 15 seconds at 3400 rpm take out the tubes after centrifugation and we check them for agglutination at times we can obtain agglutination even at this stage so when we are uh, ideally we should be looking against an agglutination mirror so when we uh, mix the pellet it should show a retention or you could say that it should show that uh, some kind of small dots like chilies in the test tube but at this level uh, in this case at least i did not get any agglutination so uh, gradually we're taking out all the tubes and as you can see we're checking all the tubes for agglutinates and a uh, few seconds more just winding up this thing before we proceed on to the next step which is of which is incubation and incubation can be done for 
15 to 30 minutes if you are not adding any uh, enhancement media if you add enhancement medias in that case your uh, incubation time will be reduced to just 10 minutes or uh, if you are adding less and if you are adding albumin then uh, for even uh, the same time or you could say for 10, 20 minutes but uh, we are generally not adding anything right now uh, in this step we are just going to place the whole rack in the water bath after taking the incubation uh, period uh, we are going to do the washings so we are adding two thirds uh, of the uh, test tube we are filling them up with normal saline like this each tube and then we are going to centrifuge the tubes for one minute once we do centrifugation for one minute at 3400 rpm we will take out the test tubes and we will discard the uh, water obtained and we will just leave the pellets and uh, we will ensure to drop as much water from the uh, test tubes as possible so this is how we are discarding the normal saline and we will repeat this step at least three times and this will ensure that add that all the free globulins are removed so after three washings to each test tube we are going to add two drops of Coombs reagent and this is the last step uh, of uh, RH antibody performance and uh, this is quite a lengthy uh, procedure of titter finding out but the last step is just Coombs uh, Coombs test so gradually we are adding two drops of the Coombs reagent to each test tube as you can see so now now we are going to centrifuge the uh, Coombs reagent added test tubes for 15 to 20 seconds at 3400 rpm again and then we are going to check the pallets for uh, agglutination so this is the last step and uh, let's see one of these test tubes for agglutinase so we are going to shake the palate and uh, you can see the greenish tinge of the Coombs reagent let's see it against some white paper so we can clearly identify the agglutinase this is how the test tube palate looks like when we just take it out from the centrifuge and the next image shows how the little chilies or you can say the agglutinates look like when you uh, show it against a transparent or white background so I have uh, checked the agglutinates in all the test tube and I can see that my experiment shows that till 1 by 16 it is showing clear agglutinates or chilies uh, sort of uh, agglutinates three positive agglutinates which I will confirm on microscope so macroscopically and microscopically both ways the last step in RH antibody will be making the slide we are going to examine 1 by 16 and 1 by 32 not 1 by 64 and uh, because the last test tube that showed agglutinates was 1 by 8 so I am just going to see 1 by 16 and see whether that also shows any agglutinates on the microscopy uh, even though it's not showing it macroscopically 1 by 16 is not showing it macroscopically only 1 by 8 were, one was positive in the test tube so now I'm going to see the slide and I'm going to share the uh, mi microscopic view with you so this is a microscopic review you can see a cluster that I have pointed out over here the agglutinates are present microscopically as well so I'm going to give a titter of 1 by 8 macroscopically and 1 by 16 on the microscopy some books recommend that you should show the uh, final titter as the highest dilution that shows it macroscopically so mine would be 1 by 8 i hope you enjoyed today's video stay tuned for an another interesting procedure here on pathology end